Welcome back. So for now, I'm going to carry on um, with kind of the walkthrough style from the part one of the guide. I think the first few turns here are really important, so I kind of want to give you guys a good uh, base to work from. The first few turns, at least like the first 10, 15, are going to be pretty much the same in most every campaign. So I can... Uh, there's a high degree of reliability as far as what's going to happen here. Once we get out of that, in your campaigns things may vary wildly. So depending on who declares war on you, which AI comes out triumphant and so on. So at that point, uh, I'll try to give you just the tools to deal with various situations that may come up. But for now, uh, we're just going to go through with the walkthrough. So we're recruiting more units here. We've gotten uh, Iron Spike on the earliest possible turn, which is excellent. We're going to be tearing down the uh, conscription halls in uh, our capital to make way for better and more grander buildings. Well, not really, actually, at first. <laughs> but uh, let's end the turn and go from there. Alright, so now we've got this available. Uh, a slot in our capital. I think for the moment, again, with the themes I mentioned last time with the technology, we need to get our growth up early so we can get out of having these crappy cities as fast as possible. We've got plenty of gold in the bank. We just have no growth to spend it right now. So temporarily, we're going to grab some Dark Elf Manors. That's also going to give us a bit of extra replenishment uh, for our armies as we... Because we need to move fast here. Um, one thing, don't attach your assassin here back to the army if you've removed them because that'll actually slow the army down you won't be able to reach moonshard next turn we're going to pass up the opportunity to recruit and pass up the opportunity to replenish more and we're just going to go here because we need to uh, make some haste get this province under control asap so we can start moving out before the computer uh, is ready for us and then we'll move him along with the army like so I yeah, could have attached him. Doesn't matter. I'll just have him attack the garrison next time. Because he's almost dead anyway. <clears throat> Sorry. Alright, so that's pretty much that turn. Um, I should mention, just looking at diplomacy, Sildrator, in the playthroughs I've done, has ended up as kind of a bastion. They held out a very long time against the uh, Lizardmen. <laughs> Probably due to the fact that they, like you, also spread chaos corruption. Speak whilst you can. So that's kind of convenient. You. Agreeable. So you can get a non-aggression pack with them easy enough. Um, there. That'll Dread get your relations on your southern the border court. fine, as long what as they hold out. As ordered. And also, they'll give you some money. So that's something you can actually do uh, with any faction that likes you. Every so often, just request a small amount of gold from them. They'll give it to you. And that's one way you can... Uh, Get your uh, coffers up, as long as you have friendly factions, which isn't always the case, of course. Anyway, so in marching here, we blew up the uh, the guy's first army, so we're not too worried about it, and uh, we can just go pell mell for the goal, eh? All right, so I'm gonna end the turn here. All right, so we have a new mission. Don't care about that. I am the first sorcerer. And then uh, we can have the assassin assault the garrison here, soften it up, at which he will fail again because he's useless. <laughs> Beggars, right? Um, I don't know if I'd waste the gold on getting the second level of um, residences. For now, that should be fine, since we'll want to use our gold later to start getting our provinces up to snuff, so to speak. Um, then we can easily take Moonshard. This battle's a walkover, so I don't think uh, you guys need any help with this one. Take everything. Leave nothing. With that done, um, as I mentioned, with this particular province, usually I like loot and occupy, and also the rebels will just give you more slaves and gold when they rebel. But in this case, we don't want to have to move our single army back while we're moving into new lands here, because we need to do that pretty quickly. Haste is the theme of the volume, so to speak. So we're going to occupy this. Power blooms within me. And then Felician's going to question our competence. <laughs> A vile corruption you control spread. the entire province. How quaint. So that does give you the opportunity to issue commandments. Now, right away, what's going to get this under control is the fact that you can issue the uh, Demand Highborn Hostages uh, commandment from this province. 
The other one's all oh, tempting, tempting. The growth one's tempting. But right now, what that the highborn hostages one is going to do is it's going to unlock one of our rights. And the first right you're going to unlock is the uh, sacrifice to authority, which incidentally we have enough slaves for. And that's going to increase our public order by plus eight. So that's going to hold this province from rebelling while we move on quickly and start expanding our empire. So we'll do the uh, highborn hostages commandment. Hag and then um, Sabioth, well, next turn he can join up. Marathi gets the opportunity to level up again. At this point, kind of the biggest power spike that you'll see for Marathi, I think, is getting Pit of Shades so that she can start um, doing some real damage to infantry in, uh, in combat. So, Rote Marcher is also tempting, but I think we have enough movement right now. Of course, it's also uh, another one you'll probably want to pick up early, is the first Sorceress. And this one doesn't look that great, at the, just looking at it right now, and, but if you think about it, that's going to let you get sorcerers out, or Sorceresses out before Tier 4, and Tier 4 is still out for your uh, cities, your level 4 towns, I should say. And when I mentioned Tier, I mean that. Um, that's going to let you get your sorceresses out very early in comparison to having to build a very expensive building. And the sorceresses actually give additional public order for provinces and also let you block enemy armies. It's a lot of utility. So first sorceress is something we're going to pick up um, soon. Soon. But for now, I think we need our uh, combat ability a little bit more. We want to get um, Pit of Shade as soon as possible. Since that's Mother kind of her of big damage spell. At the same time, we can start recruiting more. Uh, I'm going to aim for four Dread Spears here, and then after that, go into more crossbows. Just so that we are. Uh, crossbows are going to be more the useful when we're assaulting tanky. walled cities like Bleak Old Fortress, which we we'll have to do soon, right? So it makes sense. Then we can also upgrade Moonshard, use our growth that we've been going for. Anarian's bride. And that should be the turn. For now. Now on this turn, turn 5, if you're counting, uh, we get Marathi's quest for Heartrender and the Dark Sword. So you'll notice that she needs to do some raiding at some point. Um, right now, maybe not the easiest thing to do, but uh, something to keep in mind. Raiding Stance will be useful. Raiding Stance is useful for more than just quests, though, since it also brings slaves. So if you get the opportunity to raid your opponents and bring in more slaves, remember that slaves are a huge part of your massive economy boost. So that's always useful. All right, so we got our growth tech, and we got our right unlocked. So let's sacrifice those slaves we got to authority. Get the cool little animation, right, performed. Now our public order is actually in the positive. Even considering uh, it'll drop with military presence to minus one, but we're not in imminent danger of rebelling anymore. And that means that Sabioth also can uh, level up, can grab... Uh, Precise. Increases weapon damage. And then we'll move Marathi out. We're going to need more troops if we're going to take Bleak Hold Fortress soon. So let's grab three more crossbows. As I mentioned, they'll be more useful uh, in the assault on cities that we have in, in mind. And we can also have um, Sabioth join the army, at which point he'll start getting some health back, which is mildly useful. One thing... Um, that I should mention about your cities once they start getting into level 2 like this. I know it doesn't seem like something you might want, but garrison buildings on the higher difficulties I feel are crucial. So you, especially with the way upkeep works, you're not going to be able to have armies everywhere. So having watchtowers and especially dark palisades that give you walls are a crucial part of your defense network. Because right now, you'll notice, we're at war with the Beastmen. They might show up unexpectedly from unexpected directions. You never know when the Lizardmen might come down. You never know who might declare war on you, just by a roll of the dice, right? So by having garrisons in all your cities, you slow them down, and you give you yourself the opportunity to bleed them a bit, so that when your armies come, you're in a position to just mop them up, rather than have to uh, have a serious threat on your hands. And it really slows down the progression of enemies through your lands. So generally, I would always recommend getting garrison buildings in every settlement. You never know. Um, especially once you start rituals, if you're doing the rituals, 
you'll also see armies coming from unexpected directions. And just in general, build your garrison buildings. Just just do it. Trust me. It's a good idea. You won't regret it. <laughs> All right. I watch from the that said, uh, we can also spend a little bit of money and upgrade this. But um, I might want to hold off on that, actually, come to think of it, just because Marathi is going to be moving on and we won't have a second army. So we'll hold on to the gold just uh, as our growth gets up. Uh, hopefully we can start getting some level 3s. Shouldn't take too long with... Uh, our growth is looking in, like it's in a good spot right now, so. I am Marathi. And she's Marathi, if you were wondering. Anyway, let's end the turn and move on with our assault into uh, Bleak Hold. Extremely conveniently for us, though, uh, Bleak Hold has decided to exert what meager strength they have in attacking our army. So that gives us the opportunity to destroy them, and also gives us the opportunity to have a look at a, a field battle. And, uh,. Maybe uh, learn a thing or two. Let's go. So we're fighting another choke point battle. Uh, you can see over here the AI is coming on from behind their deployment zone. Typical behavior for the AI is going to be to link their two armies up and then come after you. That said, uh, the choke point provides us a fairly significant advantage. So I don't know that we want to go out chasing after them overly. Now... One thing, a tactic that I could mention that a lot of people are having a lot of success with right now, but is kind of cheesy and maybe fixed in the future, so I don't know that I can recommend it all that well. If you have a single model unit, like a Hydra, for example, single entity, or a, a tanky lord, so not Marathi, if you have them in front of your army and then have um, your ranged units covering them from various sides, the AI will tend to blob. Currently, as I say, this might get fixed in the future. A blob in a big horde, all attacking that one unit you put ahead of your army, which makes them extremely vulnerable since uh, it's a single entity uh, unit to being shot from various sides, which will put them in a really bad spot real fast. Um, that said, I don't know that I can completely recommend this strategy in the future. It may be fixed because it seems like a lot of people are complaining about it. So, it may not work for very long. You never know. That said, let's put our units into groups. Get ready here. The AI is probably going to come from this side just because they're going to link up on the right side. So, I don't think they're going to come by this left thing. I could be wrong, but we'll see. Uh, we'll put our assassin in the back because he's wounded, so we don't want him to accidentally get killed. That would be most unfortunate for us. And, uh, yeah, we'll try to catch him in the crossfire. Remember that shields only work from the front, so if you can shoot them from the sides like this, it's highly beneficial for your uh, success in battle. Alright, so let's start the battle up and see what happens here. Also, as I mentioned, you can put your uh, missile units in guard mode, and that tends to help them uh, not go chasing after things you don't want them to chase after. So it looks like they're actually going to come in straight ahead. Huh. And one of their armies force marched into battle using march stance. So what that means is that they start out very tired and rapidly become exhausted and can't get back their stamina. Or vigor as it's called in this game. So what that means is they'll be, as I mentioned earlier, at a 30% debuff to all their stats. So yeah, they're actually not going to link up. They're just going to come right after us. Which works for me, really. That's no big deal. Black Ark Corsairs are kind of the mid-tier uh, Dark Elven infantry. They have 80 armor, which means absolutely nothing to uh, Dark Elf missile units that all pierce armor. So, that said, let's move Marathi up. Let's start wearing them down with spells. No need, I think, to uh, overcast Melkoth's Mystifying Miasma here. Because Marathi's health is not maybe what we'd like. Alright, so let's get these Dread Spears under control. And then let's have our Hydra breathe on the biggest concentration of troops they can find. The troops here that are in wide formation, it's going to be hard for the Hydra to do as much damage to the ones that are in deep formation, since the fire from its breath will penetrate and hit a whole bunch in a row. Alright, do the thing, Hydra. Please. 
Why are you not doing the thing? Do the thing. Thank you. There we go. Let's back off because our Hydra is getting wounded by the uh, dark shards here. Alright. Okay. We still got an okay chance here, I think, despite our Hydra's decision to just blunder about in confusion. Well, so we can start shooting with that. Okay. This Black Art Corsair shouldn't last long, in theory. Yeah, already routed. You notice they've, uh, been routed by the terror there. Alright, let's lure these shades back, because we want their shades to come into missile range. Shades, as I mentioned, they're very killy, but also very vulnerable, so... Alright, let's turn our Hydra about. Breathe on these jerk boats again. Alright, Dark Shards, let's focus on this Shade unit. We want to get rid of them. This whole little attack is rapidly failing, so that's all good. Alright, fire away. Let's move up a little bit more, because I think we're using all of our missile weapons here. Notice the shades are rapidly dropping. Perfect. Marathi up here. So the shades are routing now. Let's shoot the rest of their missile units. Who else is coming up here? Okay, the Dread Spears, eh? Send in the Hydra. Okay, let's maybe lure them up a bit more here. We'll bring in our own melee units here. Perfect. These ones are shielded, so they're a little bit more annoying to get rid of. We'll throw down a Soul Blight here, just so we can weaken their missile or their weapon damage here. So let's move in here. We'll move in our own melee units to help our Hydra out. They're already exhausted, so that works. We'll make them, while they're tied up, move around the flank with these guys, the uh, other Dread Spears. Remember, it's always beneficial to try to envelop the opponents, just as your tutorial video in the game actually shows you. So it looks like they are all uh, skirmishing away, which works for me. Let's move around the flank here. Hopefully the rear, if we can manage it. Okay. So now we've got the Dark Shards being hit by the Harpies. Perfect. Let's throw down a Long Duration Soul Blight so we can swing this fight in our favor. There's the chance, of course, of miscasting with those Overcasts, but I think in this case it's worth it. Throw out another Mystifying Miasma. We've got our uh, extra damage boost and vigor boost from uh, Murderous Prowess, so that's good. We can also throw out a Power of Darkness, so we can sacrifice the life of our Spearmen for more mana. The enemy's mostly all routing here, so we can just go right after their ranged units. No problem. And that'll pretty much be the game, since they can't do much about it now. One unit here that can fire while moving is these handbows, so we'll see if we can get rid of them. Bring our Hydra up. Alright, perfect. One thing you should also know about battles is that even though this Dark Shard unit has taken a lot of damage, every man that isn't fully killed will, uh, go back to full health at the end of the battle. So it looks like it's at half health. When the battle's over, it'll go back to about 75%, since it's 51 out of 68. So that's a useful thing. Um, if you can spread the damage out over your units. Alright. Looks like their generals are getting wrecked. 
Perfect. And same with this unit. It's at one third health, but it's actually going to go up to like over half once the battle's over. Although the same works for the enemy, so it's often worth it to pursue them with whatever units you have available. And uh, reduce their numbers a bit. Anyway, so that's that battle, and uh, we'll move on now. And as before, uh, we'll want to grab the slaves and the replenishment. That's usually the best option. A tiny bit of experience usually won't make a huge deal. And we certainly don't want to lose our replenishment rate for a subpar amount of money in this case. So let's take the slaves and uh, go from there. The dog grows so it does. Well, one other thing I can mention. If you want to speed your turns up and not watch the AI very slowly move, uh, if you hit pause on the end turn display, go to allied, enemy, and neutral factions, you can speed up their animation speed to fastest. So you'll still see them move, but they'll move much faster on the map, and that can speed up your turn time. So moving on into turn six here, uh, not too much to do in our own cities. You'll notice the public order is under control. We don't have quite enough slaves for our sacrifice to Cain, um, but that's okay. That'll be... it allows you to get Dark Condit, which is actually a super useful ability. Really nasty. Um, it targets one of your units in battle while you have the Sacrifice to Cain active. It does make them exhausted, but anything that's in melee combat with them is going to get wrecked. Which is pretty cool. It also causes your slave rate to decline. Eh. Eh. No big deal. So let's see. Marathi will need to wipe these guys up. So we'll, uh, wreck them. Uh, this is pretty auto-calculable, but uh, I'm gonna fight it out just for perfectionist purposes. Which, uh, yeah, I'm not. No need to show you that. I think you guys can manage this kind of battle. So one way the AI actually doesn't cheat now is that if you defeat one of its armies in forced march stance, the uh, entire army is destroyed, which is a change from Warhammer One and previous games with the march stance. So that's something to keep in mind because the AI really loves march stancing in this game. They'll just walk right up to you in it. It's kind of fun, but um, I don't know if they'll fix that later. We'll see. In any event, um, so because we want to take Bleakhold Fortress next turn, because we have a siege attacking unit, the Hydra, we're not going to go back and replenish here. We're just going to move ever onward. We should be able to hit them next turn if we have 25% of our... If we Even if we don't move our full uh, movement allowance, I should say. So if we keep 25% of our uh, movement allowance, we can go ambush stance. There's an unlikely chance they'll blunder into us. You never know. Um, seems worth doing. So that'll be the end of that turn. And then next turn we'll move on and take over uh, Bleak Old Fortress. Alright. So in this situation here on turn 7, you'll notice the AI has actually recruited another no. army here. They won't always do this. Um, so what you could do here is attack this army. This will force the garrison of Bleak Hold Fortress. To, well, the AI always does this. It'll march out, and you can destroy it outside its walls. In this case, I kind of want to show you guys what you have to do if it doesn't happen, if you're forced to just attack the fortress head on. Um, so I'm going to attack the city and just show you guys the siege assault battle, even though in this case it would be better to attack Roveron here and lure the garrison out. But uh, you can't always rely on this. The AI doesn't always do this. So here we're going to see what happens when we do a Siege Assault. To arms, two arms? Two arms? Wait, don't have any arms. My arms? Who's stolen my arms? Arm thief? Anyway, so in a Siege Battle, what you really want to be doing is looking for points where you can attack that are going to have the least amount of... Uh, obnoxious towers massacring your forces so in this case this wall is only covered by a single tower you could also attack on the corner here although these two towers would be able to shoot you in that case because the corner towers have an odd firing angle whereas if you tried to attack over here you'd be getting hit by three towers at once and you the ai well, the way they use their towers is that they're always going to attack the closest unit in front of them which means that you can assign things like your hydra just to tank the tower fire and not have to worry too much about it. Marathi. In the meantime, the reason we recruited so many crossbows is that crossbows are going to do work here. Because what the AI is going to do, generally in a siege battle, 
is always try to man their towers near you. Which means that as you shoot them off the walls, they'll put more infantry units, keep pouring them in to get shot. So you can often win these siege battles just by uh, sheer firepower alone. Once again, we don't want our assassin to get killed. And harpies, well, they can just hang back and be cool for now. And then, uh, yeah. Once we start the battle, we'll want to get in quick, start shooting them, have our uh, tanks in place. Dread Spears are good at tanking with their 55% block shields and being generally really cheap. Alright, let us begin. So, one, two, three, we can get everyone moving up real fast using our control groups that I showed you before. Alright. You won't be able to block tower shots, but you will be able to block shots from stuff like Dark Shards. Alright. We can also use Marathi to start weakening them. They've got their Dark Shards on the walls, no surprise there. Which means that we can also send in our Dread Spears right away. Alright. And our Dread Spears move up and start firing. Our Hydra's going to take a lot of damage here, there's no way around that. But that's okay. The uh, Dark Shards will start shooting the uh, Dread Spears instead once they get in close. And then we'll start getting our firepower in on them. And the Hydra can start regenerating now since they tend to shoot the closest target. Marathi can keep uh, weakening them here. Obviously, we're not going to be doing all that well in a missile duel because we don't have shields in our dark shards, but that's okay because we outnumber them badly enough that it won't even be a thing. And then as our dread spears move in, we can support them with fire and basically just shoot them off the walls, as is our goal here. And our hydra will keep regenerating thanks to its another takes its place rule, so that's kind of nice. Let's get these Dark Shards moving up so they can start shooting too. That tower is going to keep wrecking us, not much we can do about that. If we put Marathi in front, single uh, entity units tend to be better at eating tower fire because they don't, they'll miss a lot of shots, right? So then over here, they sent in their bleak swords. We can use spells to help deal with that. When you're climbing up on tower, on uh, ladders up the walls, you will become exhausted pretty quickly because it drains your your vigor pretty quick. But that's okay in this case, as we're just gonna, as I say, blow them up with our uh, range supporting fire more than anything. Of course, they're gonna shoot us too with what they have. But that's okay, because they lost most of their shooting power in the initial attack on the walls, conveniently. And we can keep supporting uh, our melee units with Marathi's spells as well. Listen to the sweet, sad choir in the background. <laughs> Alright. So as you can see, the Dread Spears are very tired. That'll happen. Tired. Tired. When they uh, climb up the walls. But in this case, as I say, most of our damage is going to come from our... Uh, ranged firepower that's supporting. Let's get some firepower on them. Perfect. Let's get some shots on these Dread Spears. Their murderous prowess is already procced because they're a smaller army so they don't need to kill as many units for it to come up. Uh, ours is going to come up here soon though. And they'll feel our vengeance. Dread Spears are going to get wrecked, but that's really the lot of Dread Spears in life is to get wrecked. They die for your fleeting tactical advantage. <laughs> anyway, we can throw out another Soul Blight, support our uh, units there. This full health Dark Shards unit is a good target for Marathi's Power of Darkness, so we can sacrifice their lives for more mana. As is the Dark Elf Way of War. Let's put our uh, Dark Shards back in guard mode here. Let's move this unit back a little bit so they don't get too much damage. Alright. 
keep firing on them. That's good. That should take care of that unit. So as I mentioned, it's mainly going to be about the ability just to shoot them off the walls. And in later sieges, once you get shades, I'll show you how that works to even greater effect. And as long as we have our Dread Spears here, they're going to continually pour more troops into the gap. Conveniently, for us. Or we can continue to pound them with crossbows until they die. With our cold-blooded killers! The Merciless Host! Alright. Marathi continues to eat tower fire like a boss, because it hit misses her like 90% of the time. Uh, let's throw down another Soul Blight. Sacrifice some more Dark Shards for sweet mana. Or wins, as this game calls it, I should say. Let's move our damage units back out and move in our uh, less damage units there. Perfect. One thing you can also do, it's not really necessary in this battle, you can send in the Hydra now around, now that it's regenerated, to go attack the gates and then chop them up. Some of our Dark Shards have wasted all their ammo, so that's okay. And then some of them still have lots. That's okay. Because we're winning this battle pretty handily now. You'll notice the enemy only has 160 men remaining. So no biggie deal. And they've actually lost control of their tower now. So that's pretty much the end of the game. You can also shoot their obnoxious leader here. With uh, volley fire when you don't have direct line of sight is quite inaccurate, so you'll notice here most of the shots are just going to miss. But, in this situation, why not? Actually, once you have the walls, one thing you can also do, if you just tell your Dark Shards here, hey, climb the walls, you can actually start firing down on top of them from the uh, inside of the wall ledge. Which, if the enemy has any infantry left, they usually won't let you do it. But once it's all dead, then you can do that. If they have, like, monsters hanging out down here. Or you can send your Hydra in. Hydra, hater of gates. So they have a few more Dread Spears that are still coming in to fight. But nothing too scary now. Alright, let's order the Dark Shards to take position on the walls. Get the Dread Spears out of there. And then we can start crossbowing down on their lords below. They're not already dying to army losses. Looks like they probably have a unit hiding back here at their main uh, city center. We'll sped the battle up here since this is the outcome is certainly not in doubt. There goes army losses. Perfect. So when an army gets destroyed inside a city, it's there's no hope for them. They lose their entire army. You don't have to, to uh, hunt them down or anything. You can if you want to, just for like chevrons of experience. But um, or you want to just let your Hydra regenerate. Although our Hydra has actually hit the regeneration cap. It's regenerated a full 5200 health, which is pretty nice. In any event, that's that, and we'll move on. So now we've managed to grab um, the last of the bleak hold cities. We can loot and occupy this all. for our sweet slave count. And what we'll want to do now that we have more than one province is halt the flow of slaves to... Um, the Black Coast. Remember, we want to concentrate our slaves in our highest income provinces as much as possible. Uh, in the meantime, the Moon Shard can grab uh, Garrison Building. I'm paranoid. I like Garrison Buildings. As I say, you'll really regret it if a random enemy army comes around the sea, lands, or if the Beastmen appear and attack your city and you don't have a Garrison there. You'll be really sad, and you'll probably want to reload the game. So, avoid reloads, build your garrison buildings, drive this point home. In any event, so now this last army is probably going to just attack us seven. next turn. They'll probably siege us, actually, is what they'll do. So if we move Marathi what? out, she'll continue to replenish. We'll lose replenishment so if they just exciting. siege uh, Bleak Old Fortress next turn. Anarian and that would be bride. unfortunate. In any event, so Marathi has leveled up. We can grab, finally, Pit of Shades, which means she can now really contribute to uh, combat. And then we can go after her more um, 
awesome trait. So grabbing first sorceress is kind of next on the uh, to-do list. So we can start getting our sorceresses leveled, and they can start providing public order for our provinces. And then later on, providing casting support for our second and third armies. In the meantime, Bleakhold Fortress has a conscription hall. Which does mean that we can actually recruit more units. It will put our income into the negative, but that's okay. Um, since we're going to be doing a lot of fighting in the immediate future. Since uh, Clark Harond is next on our list of factions to chop up mercilessly. Tyrannoch down here, they may declare war on you. This happened in my other playthrough, and it's obnoxious, because Arnheim is already leveled and has a garrison, and they have an army here. But, as long as they don't attack you, it's probably better to get going, because Arnheim doesn't have a huge amount of value outside of the commandment for Bleakhold on the Black Coast, whereas grabbing Vol's Anvil and moving up into Shadowwood, hopefully taking over Shadowwood, the province, and then getting into Hagrafe and Nagarond, ASAP, is a huge priority, I feel, because of just how rich those provinces are. And also, of course, Exactly. Vol's Anvil and its sweet, sweet Absolute. minus 10% upkeep. <laughs> Alright, that said, our growth continues apace. We're recruiting or researching more growth. I don't know if you want to spend the 2,000 gold. You can. It's only an extra 20 growth per turn. Eh. I wouldn't do it because I'm going to just dismantle these manors later. But for now, uh, they'll serve their purposes for 600 gold. It's totally worth it. Ridiculous. Uh, we have a damaged building, so we can repair our uh, stronghold here. The Sunderer. And carry on Everywhere from there. Ruin. So now on turn 8, um, Karan Kar has actually thrown us a huge opportunity. You notice that they force marched into their town here at Hag Hall. Now, if we attack them immediately, which we can, we have the room, they'll have to fight with all of their units at a basically a minus 30% penalty to everything, and they'll be annihilated if they lose the battle. So that'll leave us free to range in and take Vol's Anvil and the rest of their territory that we covet. So I think for now, even though the Bleak Holds aren't annihilated, you don't want to pass up this opportunity to destroy their army while it's weak. Um, meanwhile on this, uh, we'll be able to upgrade the ancient city of Quintex to level 3 next turn, so that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, we can probably start upgrading this at some point. We'll have Marathi, we'll have to go back and probably deal with the Rebellion once the Rite of Atharti is uh, over with. And at that point, hopefully, if we can grab stuff like uh, Black Art Corsairs and a Reaper Bolt Thrower, that'll really increase the utility of our army. So I'm going to upgrade that for the 2k gold. In the meantime, uh, we won't be overly needing this recruitment building here. We'll probably want more growth, in fact, because our growth right now is pathetic. And this is why... <laughs> If you research this, it's actually going to triple the growth, the pathetic growth that this province has right now. Although that'll be fixed more as we get more of the province. In any event. How can the Black Court aid you this day? So one thing you can look at when you're declaring war on people is to see who they're at war with. Unfortunately, we don't know Hargarnath, but oftentimes factions will actually pay you gold to join their wars, and if you're going to attack them anyway, it pays to just fill up your treasury. So for now, Clark Arond, we're going to declare day? the suffering and declare war on them. Let there be war and suffering for all, especially these guys. So as I mentioned, this is a wonderful opportunity since this place doesn't have much of a garrison is it to just walk right in and destroy one of their big armies, not. and that'll put them in a pretty bad situation. So we'll attack Why these jerks. Okay. The auto calc bar is against us, but again, the fact that they're exhausted is going to be our saving grace here in uh, this battle. They do have a lot of melee units, but Dread Spears, they're just not all that. And I think that uh, with Marathi's new Pit of Shades, we'll put that to work. And of course, uh, we have our Hydra. To so, the vengeful slaughter. yeah. Let's uh, show you guys this battle. We'll get a little bit more experience Marathi with our field battles now. Fight. This is going to be another choke point battle. Uh, we've got our units organized. One unit on the left flank of Dark Shards. Dark Shards two on the right with crossbows. Our Dread Spears here. We have Marathi Group 4 with our magic. We have our Assassin Hydra and Harpies so we can harass their ranged units. Um, this crook 
choke point bundle I think actually favors us, just because uh, we can get a lot of units affected by Marathi's magic, and they can't spread out to envelop us with their uh, melee superiority. So, let's see how this goes. We'll run up. I will say that in this game, um, running doesn't seem to cost you as much vigor, and it so you will have a chance to recover anyway being the attacker here. So I'm not too worried about that in any event. Let's move up here. We should have missile superiority, so I'll see if we can exploit that to start with. Although Dark Shards, their range leaves something to be desired. But it is what it is. Alright, let's move these guys up. Our assassin come in and, you know, pick people off with his crossbow now, too, conveniently. He does have 800 missile damage, which is kind of cool. Um, that said... So it's going to be obviously difficult to turn a flank in this battle. The kind of the best flank you can hope for is to outshoot the enemy missile units and then start shooting their shielded infantry in the flanks. So let's move up here. Battle ready. Murder right. Move them here. So range, so we can start moving up. Probably also harass them with our uh, harpies. Let's move you up on this flank. We'll have our spearman core in the center. Obviously, they have a significantly larger melee unit core, but that's okay. Since they're all exhausted, they're fighting at minus 30% effectiveness anyway. So, I'm not overly scared of that. Alright, let's move the harpies in to harass as we move in to start shooting. Oops, don't want our uh, spears with it. Open fire. Let's see here, can you guys get some shots off? Yeah, you should be able to. There we go. And they're already very tired, so their fire rate's going to suffer as well. Except for these specific ones, annoyingly, but that's okay. Alright, fire away, I suppose. Oh, here they come. So let's move these guys out of here. Go for the flank shots here. Move up our uh, dark shards on the right flank. Get some breaths off here with our hydra. We can send in the uh, harpies after their dark shards as well, preferably the fresh ones. They can move in here. Hopefully our host is going to be pretty merciless. Let's send in Marathi there. It is done. It is done. Keep shooting, eh? For the king. Their missile units back here aren't doing much because of our convenient harpies. Marathi. And Marathi can start doing some stuff here. Let's throw down a pit of shades. Maybe we can start wrecking this obnoxious mass of things. Fail. We can throw out our power of darkness and some of our dark shards and get some mana back. A pit of shade should do a lot of damage. We can also throw out a boosted soul blight right here in the middle, hopefully to swing this fight in our favor. Those dread spears are broken. Excellent. And these guys just got broken by the pit of shades. So that's convenient. Looks like on this side, we've managed to shoot up the enemy missile units fairly effectively. So we can start getting some flank shots, throwing down the line here, which will ignore their shield bonuses conveniently. You can volley fire into fights. It's not as effective, though, as getting direct shots like this from the right flank, unfortunately. All right, let's... The harpies are done. Well, we expected that. We just got our murderous prowess, so that should help us out a fair bit. And also, our spears are particularly dreadful. <laughs> what a ridiculous name, eh? Anyway, let's throw out our power of darkness. Get some more mana back. Our Hydra is doing 119 kills. It's doing some work. I'll give it that. 
Let's not let these Dark Shards and Dread Spears, uh, rather, uh, replenish. Let's see if we can continue to outshoot them, shoot them. Hopefully our, I'm confident that our, uh, missile superiority should start to tell here as we fire here. The miss, the, um, rather the flank shots are useful, but not if we're getting shot up by their crossbows. We can also throw out a pit of shades on one of their missile units. Preferably one in the back, it's hard to get to, and that should easily wreck them. Uh, assassin man, sorry, I forgot about him. Get in there and start shooting. There goes that pit of shades, yeah, they're getting wrecked. Perfect. Most perfect. You guys just keep shooting them. So again, it's all about, you know, favorable matchups and flanking. I feel that's, to a very large extent, most of the battle game. Um, so getting those flank shots on their center was a huge deal. Also, these gays, effective use of magic is a thing as well, but... Uh, Alright, let's throw out another Power of Darkness, get some more mana. Our Hydra's still going nuts murdering things. Our Dread Spears can get into combat. Looks like they're terrified of us. They're all routing in the center. So we've got the, uh, the center under control here. Hopefully we can shoot. Oh, now they've got their army losses debuffed. And since they're in a settlement, their whole army is going to die. And if you look at some of our units, like this Dark Shard unit that is at below half health, since it still has 57 of its 68 uh, men alive, it's actually going to go back to like 80% health, which is pretty sweet. So that's that. Another uh, clean victory. Which is what you need, I think, on Very Hard, because you really need to start expanding quickly, winning some battles, maybe where the auto-resolve is against you, taking advantage of when the AI loves its march stance too much, and uh, moving forward. As you can see, Marathi is finally pulling her weight with 274 kills in that battle. The, the pit of shadesing is real. 211 kills for the Hydra, of course, as well. And some of the Dark Shards started to get intensely funny numbers of kills. So that's going to put um, Clara Corond in a very difficult spot, having lost one of their main armies in that kind of situation. Uh, we can loot and occupy again, get another 800 What's slaves. Is mine. And then when the, this province inevitably rebels, We'll get even more slaves, so. Uh, and also, one thing I should mention about the rebellions um, is that since uh, the Iron Peaks has such an intense amount of chaos corruption, you're going to see chaos revolts there, which are more dangerous than your average revolt. So it's a little bit more dangerous if the provinces where you've already corrupted them significantly rebel, rather than if this province rebels, you get some random low-tier Dark Elf units, whatever, right? Not such a big deal. So now Marathi has leveled up. Uh, as I mentioned, as awesome as the magic and arcane conduit is, I think it's important to grab Hakarti's Blessing and then grab First Sorceress, because you want to get your agents going so they can start leveling up and helping you out. Um, meanwhile, our assassin's also leveled up. Uh, da -da -da, he can grab oh, Dark Venom, nice. That's a on use that lets, basically lets him instantly win a duel with plus 75% weapon damage. It's pretty intense. Um, in the meantime, I believe that's all we have to do this turn. Yeah. Can upgrade our uh, sorry iron spike there. Then later when Marathi goes back, not sure when I canceled that. Oh well, it's been an accident. Anyway. Doesn't matter. This province, I should mention, since it has pastures, it's an ideal spot to get uh, Dark Riders. Get extra experience, minus upkeep for Dark Riders. Dark Riders, um, yes. normally not an overly potent unit, but when you look at Marathi's favorite assets, you can give them huge bonuses, uh, especially once you grab Raid Leader. You're looking at plus 16 melee defense, a whole bunch of extra missile damage charge bonus, a bunch of melee attack. So Dark Riders can become very effective light cavalry. Uh, they're very fast, they vanguard. So with Marathi's army specifically, they can become far more useful than you'd find them for any other lord. I am the first In the meantime, that also means that uh, Vol's anvil is within reach. And we can... Uh, 
start working towards that sweet minus 10% upkeep building. In the meantime, I'm sure Clark Rond has more armies, since they do control the entirety of Shadow Wood. But uh, we'll have to get through them no matter what if we want to get up and start taking over Hagrave and, of course, Nagarond. So, it is, as they say, what it is. Of course, this will rebel too, but that's okay, because we'll have uh, Vol's Anvil by then and not care over much. <laughs> and of course, at some point when we get the opportunity, it is nice if we can start doing some raids with Marathi's army, since that'll mean um, we can start working towards her quest too. But right now, again, as I say, speed is of the essence. We need to start establishing ourselves now. So anyway, that's about the end of that turn, and we've got some nice slaves going. Hopefully all over here towards um, the ancient city of Quintex. As you can see, we're already getting a 12% increase. Multiply that by huge number of bonuses. Again, eventually this will start spewing gold out. It's a little bit nuts. Oh, and uh, since we got a Blade of Ruin, we can assign some extra armor-piercing damage to our friend the Assassin here. And maybe give him some more armor too. Why not, right? You may as well use your items to your best advantage. Uh, although we don't have a whole lot for most of the other slots. Anyway, let us end the turn. So, I should note, it was of course possible that in your game that Clark Ron might not march into Hag Hall suicidally like that. If they don't, I was going to attack them anyway. At that point, they should only have that one single army here, and by this time you should be able to have at least 19 units in your army, uh, or even 20 if you didn't lose that one like I lost early in the game. So you should be able to come out on top in that same kind of battle, even if they aren't force marched. Um, you take a bit more losses, but it's again, it's another battle you pretty much have to win. In this early game, it's completely doable, especially since you have a Hydra and you have Marathi's magic and they don't have any of those things. So it's a matter of this is kind of the way this campaign has to go early or you're going to end up in a lot of trouble. Like we're nine turns in and we're almost getting our second province fully done. And that's kind of the speed of progress that you're going to have to to see if you're hoping to be successful. In any event, so now that we have our growth in the ancient city of Quintex, we can get a level three city there. That's pretty cool. We're at minus 500 gold, but again, our economy for now is mainly going to be based on battle more than anything. We do have an imminent rebellion, but that's okay. In fact, even if we lose Bleak Cold Fortress to the rebels, that's okay too, because what really matters at this point is going to be grabbing Ball's Anvil and then coming back and getting at least getting the growth there going. Because all these battles are just going to add more and more to our slave count, right? And uh, as that goes up, and we get uh, upgrades in Quintex, we're going to see a lot of gold. <laughs> it's going to be glorious. Anyway, uh, I'm going to end the turn here, since Marathi can't quite reach Vol's Anvil this turn. And uh, these jerks have wandered off here. That's fine, I don't really care. As I say, Tyrannoch may declare war, it really depends. I've seen what happen. We'll see what happens. All right. Moving right along, end the turn. Alright, so turn 10. There's a few things happening here to be aware of. Uh, this is something that likely you'll see happen. The uh, Beastmen are going to show up, they're at war with you, and they have an obnoxious stack. However, in all the campaigns I've done, they do actually desire enough to make peace with you. And in fact, they desire it so much that they're willing to pay you for it. So you should be able to buy them off if they come in here and attack your uh, your rear areas. Um, I'm not sure how much gold I can get out of them. Probably not 1,500. We'll try it, though. But uh, for whatever reason, they're not overly eager to fight you. So they'll hurl some gold in your general direction, which is kind of nice. Um, they're probably going to sit here raiding you, though, which will be annoying, but there's not much you can do about it. Uh, they will improve your Chaos Corruption, though, <laughs> conveniently, which helps you out. Um, meanwhile, Bleakholds have wandered off here near Arnheim. Maybe the uh, Tyrannoch people will kill them for us. I am the we could go attack Venomglade, but I feel like it's better to get this whole province under your control. This army of three units isn't like massively threatening yet. 
You cannot hold Never. us. The rebels, of course, are attacking us here. Not much we can do about that. We'll get back in time and deal with them. For now, we need to get uh, Vol's Anvil under control and start getting that all in order. So, let's uh, attack these jerk boats. One thing we can also do is we can sacrifice to Cain. Um, that'll give us a lot of replenishment and give us the Dark Conduit in our battles. So, we'll be able to uh, gain a significant advantage from that. So let's do a, go ahead and perform the sacrifice to Cain. Throw some slaves away. <laughs> yes. Slightly uh, decrease our income, but so be it, right? There, there's always going to be more slaves. Fight Notice our replenishment has gone way up, and then we also have this sweet dark conduit ability. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Now this battle's fairly auto calculable by to now. It's not going to need to do too much. And of course, it's all experience for Marathi, right? So let's loot and I occupy again. I'm not too worried about the uh, public order hit since they're already rebelling. We can get mine. those slaves back. Uh, that'll level up Marathi's attacking trait and level up Marathi in general. Grab some sweet armor. The 10% ward save is nice, so that'll help Marathi out with her fragility. Uh, in the meantime, we can grab the first sorceress while we're moving on towards Blessed Fruit by Evil. Um, and that'll be nice for various reasons. And since we can then recruit Hero, we can start grabbing um, sorceresses. Um, whatever lore you like best, really. The trait you're looking for is malicious, since it reduces the cost of your Cult of Pleasure buildings, um, which is pretty nice, since we're going to be building those in a hurry here. So as long as we can grab at least one sorcerer with, with uh, malicious, that's good. Laura Fire is pretty strong right now. Uh, Shadows is alright. Uh, its armor reduction doesn't overly s synchronize or uh, synergize, I should say, with the Dark Elf a tendency towards armor piercing. And same with uh, Lore of Dark's Spiteful Conjuration. So Fire is kind of nice to have. It's got a lot of destructive spells right now, and its Flaming Sword's a pretty good buff. But in the meantime, we're going to start with... Um, campaign traits for our sorceresses anyway, My so. Alright. So, spread public order. Right now, she can start delaying the rebellion that we're inevitably going to have to be obnoxious by. It's a verb now. <laughs> um, in the meantime, specialist uh, will also improve her ability to uh, A, succeed, and B, not cost us too much money. And Marathi's main trait if you look at her faction, is of course minus 50% cost to hero actions, so that's kind of nice. Uh, since that doesn't stack, we'll go ahead and grab another sorceress over here in, um, that's kind of a nice trait. Leadership plus two, that's nice too. Anything else kind of cool? Hmm. That's alright. Well, let's grab that. Nelosi here can spread public order and also become a specialist. Gathering my strength. Begin her quest. So then we can repair. Goddesses love traitors' blood. <laughs> if we look at our available buildings here in Vol's Anvil, there is of course the Temple of Akarti, which gives the scrolls. If you're looking to get the ritual, then that's a good one. And then of course the Garrison Temple of Akarti is nice for your garrison in general, making that city obnoxious to take. Uh, Temple of Vol is really nice to have. It does a significant initial investment, but if you got the garrison to protect it, getting that minus 10% upkeep for all forces later game is going to be enormous. In any event, um, the Artisan's House is nice for now, since it's a little bit of extra money, since Lord knows we need it. You know, repairing it, that'll pay for itself in four turns. That's probably fine. Mother of the I don't massively anticipate being attacked yet. Welcome. The Black Court will hear you now. No. Hmm. So these guys are rightly suspicious, which means you do have to be aware of them. They may attack us. Although they are busy fighting Grand Car, which is kind of nice for us. In the meantime, Master Soldier Tor Fruity. is just doing whatever it is they do. We've got our agents out. Uh, once Quintex finishes its level 3, we can add uh, 
Probably a call to pleasure building Sorcerer since we get the discount on it from our uh, nice trade here. Malicious is pretty nice to have. Especially for the more expensive ones, and that'll help our uh, public order issues. Since the um, right of Akarti has expired, and now we're facing a rebellion in five turns, unfortunately. But not much we can do about that. As I say, that's okay. It's just more slaves, right? I am Morathi. In any event, Marathi's uh, replenishment is going to be pretty high, so we can fight our way through this fairly effectively. Alright, so that's all good. Let's uh, end this turn and carry right on. Also, our assassin is leveled up here, so we can uh, probably go into survivalist just for HP. His attack's already quite intense. And um, basically the goal is to get up to Assassin's Trophy, so it becomes a very effective Lord Destroyer. Um, that said, we can upgrade Hag Hall here, so we can hopefully start getting uh, a garrison building there, in case Karand, Clark Karand comes down and decides to uh, obnoxious us. These jerks are raiding us, of course. We'll want to wipe them out, and we have a rebellion here soon anyway. So, basically now, once we've got Ball's Anvil under control, we're going to have to march back take out this rebellion, which is probably going to assault next turn. We'll probably lose Bleak, Bleak, Bold, Bleak Hold Fortress <laughs> temporarily. That's fine. Um, we may end up with Clark Ron coming back down and attacking us, but that's fine. We're building up our slave supply. We're building up Marathi's ability and uh, in the meantime getting money to build up our economy here. In the meantime, we have a new research option. So I would suggest continual slave supply. As I say, once we get that slave machine rolling, it's going to be pretty sweet, as you'll see. Um, we've got growth in all our provinces too, which is nice. So let's take Marathi. Uh, Clara Karan moved off from Venom Blade, so we don't necessarily have to worry about an attack there. Let's head back and start um, moving as quickly as possible to deal with this revolt. We can also send our uh, sorceress up here Farewell. just to spy and see what's going on and steal technology. She'll fail at, but that's okay. Getting extra research rates always helpful. So it looks like Kalakaron does have an army ready here. So we may end up losing this again, but as I say, it's no big deal. Right now, we just need to... Uh, get Marathi's strength up constantly, be fighting constantly, be leveling her, get a whole bunch of slaves and start building up our capital region. Um, ultimately, as I say, we'll have uh, the Black Coast as a place to recruit Dark Riders since it has the bonus from pastures. Clarkeron itself has timber, which means it's a particularly good place to re uh, recruit shades which are another part you'll probably want in every army, but also especially Marathi's army. So once we start moving into the Shadow Wood, that's a good place to start building your Den of Outlaws and getting Shade recruitment going uh, and get out of these initial low-tier units. Of course, right now we can't really because our economy can't support it. But once we uh, deal with a few of these threats, it'll be in good shape. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it off there. I'll continue on it in part three. At this point, hopefully, you've got most of two provinces under control. Marathi's leveling is going well. Um, got some diplomatic coups with various provinces. And uh, you're starting to establish yourself as early as possible while the AI is still using these low-tier units and they're very easy to defeat. All right. So I'll see you next time where I'll go into more about our strategy on the long term of moving north into uh, hopefully Hagrave and dealing with kind of the rebellions as they come up. All right, see you guys soon.